Hey everybody, Mark Agnesi here for Gibson TV. Today I have the pleasure to be joined by Rock and Roll Hall of Fame member and Epiphone signature artist, Nancy Wilson. Nancy, thank you for joining me today. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, we got a lot to talk about, uh, about your guitar and all that, but before we even get to the guitar, let's talk about guitar playing a little bit, if you don't mind. When did, when did you start playing guitar? How old were you, um, were you a kid? Yeah, I was a little kid. I was about eight. Um, yeah. And, you know, we saw the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan show in like 63. And we were like, must have guitar, must have did guitar. It. That was the um, moment? Yeah, that was the, that was the lightning bolt of the moment where um, we knew what the rest of our lives were going to be all about. And... Uh, we came from such a musical family and military brats, like, you know, Marine Corps military brats. We were always stationed all the way, you know, all over the place, moving all the time. So we had a real strong sense of unity inside our family. And we did a lot of singing and playing and piano and ukuleles and harmonizing and, you know, old English pub songs and stuff. So. Yeah. Guitar was a natural progression from there. Now, um, obviously today, we know from a lot of market research, women buy about 50% of the guitars that are sold these days. Yeah. Um, it probably wasn't the same when you start. Did you ever get the, it was kind of a boys club back then. Did you ever get the, why do you want to play guitar, your girl stuff growing up? <laughs> Well, yeah, you're not, you're pretty good for a girl, you know, like. You're, How sick you're are you, were you of hearing <laughs> that? <laughs> it got kind of old and um, it's like, yeah, kind of like if you give uh, monkeys a bunch of typewriters, eventually they'll do the Gettysburg Address, you know. So <laughs> um, people would be kind of, their jaws would kind of drop because I, I had a real natural knack for the playing the guitar. And I got good pretty fast. And so I used to go and kind of, um, you know, down to the music store, the Ma and Pa store, uh, Bandwagon East, you know, and pick up one of the better guitars than what I had and sit, sit around and play it. And people would be like, whoa, look at that little gal with that great big guitar playing going on there. And so we, I, I was really a show off with it, you know. So I was proud that it was different. And, um, you know, it's just kind of like a show off. I was a, a, a ham. <laughs> Do you remember your first guitar? Do you remember what your first guitar was? It was unplayable for one thing. It was like a three quarter size, um, basically a piece of plywood with a huge, uh, you know, pipe shaped neck and a movable bridge at the bottom, but then I learned how to kind of keep it in tune by moving the bridge at the bottom while you're playing. So uh, I think it was a Stella or, or a Lyle or something, yeah. but it was unplayable. I, there was no way in on earth you could play a barred F chord on that thing. So I got really strong. And um, when I finally got a real good guitar, I. I was a lot stronger because of that first really bad guitar. Yeah. You remember yeah. when you got your first Gibson guitar? Um, the first Gibson guitar was a black Les Paul. And uh, it, it weighed a ton, you know, and you, you, you didn't want to play it for very long in the set because you'll, you'd kind of, your shoulder would you know, be injured. But, uh, but I, you know, I had to be like Jimmy Page, of course, and so I, I had to play a, a Gibson, you know, Les Paul. <laughs> I mean, you mentioned you mentioned Jimmy Page. Who were some of your guitar influences when you were starting out? Well, the, the Beatles, obviously, because you know they had that um, incredible sound that only they had um, coming from England and all that, re, you know, recycling. Um, kind of blues and soul music back into America from the English perspective. And, uh, you know, they, they were so such a tight band because they played everywhere for a long time first, 
like in Germany and they they played you know many sets per night you know getting good and yeah. um there John Lennon is such a good rhythm guitar player he was never ahead of the tempo he was always just perfectly be, behind um relaxed sounding rhythm player so he was one of my biggest influences um and Jimmy Page obviously uh you know, a lot of the acoustic stuff I got from Paul Simon, Simon and Garfunkel, Joni Mitchell, Neil Young, and huge influence on my acoustic playing. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, I think I play a lot like Neil Young on the acoustic because I, I use it like a percussion instrument. You know, you're kind of beating on it instead of like delicately plucking away, you know, so. <laughs> Well, the intro to Crazy has to be like the greatest acoustic guitar <laughs> intro ever oh. recorded. Um, Thank you. How did that come about? Did, was that something you stumbled on, something you were working on? How did you write that? Well, we were doing, we were recording in Vancouver, the uh, Dream Boat Annie, our first album. And there, there was a cool like we were listening to Yes a lot of the time those days and they had like really, Steve Howe did really cool like acoustic intros to songs. And so we knew Crazy On You was gonna be the first song, but it needed an intro just because the in that part of the seventies and the mid seventies, you know, things were really musical that way. And it's like a concept you could put out there that it was more unusual today, but um, but I, I was actually trying to rip off something that Paul Simon had done. <laughs> I think it was, which album was it? It was called Angie. It was an acoustic instrumental called Angie, which I'd had learned. And I was like, I want to do something like that. So I kind of ripped it off slightly, but it became, even when you're ripping stuff off, it becomes your own eventually. So um, so I made Silver Wheels and then the intro to Crazy On You. And uh, it's cute because people on Instagram and stuff, they, they learn it and then they play it on Instagram, you know? And it's an interesting thing to see because everyone has a whole different way of playing it. Yeah. It might sound pretty, pretty close, but all the positions are different. So, um, ultimately flattering that people would want to like, okay, I'm going to learn this really hard thing, you know, and show and tell. <laughs> Do you spend a lot of time on Instagram looking at uh, up and coming guitar players? Yeah, I like to look at Instagram. I mean, um, people are funny, you know, and, and you see a lot of cool music stuff and, and new people come up and comers. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a good distraction for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you have a brand new Epiphone signature guitar, the Nancy Wilson Fanatic Nighthawk, which is actually based on a former Gibson signature model that you had. Right. And I've seen you play Nighthawk guitars uh, for years. Yeah. When did you first discover that, that guitar and what is it about the Nighthawk that, that you love so much? Well, um, years back, I, I designed the, the body shape for, for Gibson for that model. That and was your made, design. I see. Was, I'm a kind of a Gibson. Yeah. I did not know that. I did, that like I drew it. I drew it on paper, and it it's sort of imitation of a a, a nude fe female's silhouette. You know, so uh, then everything changed up with Gibson, and it kind of went under the table, but. Uh, later, when I kind of ran across that guitar again, um, I said, well, hey, hey, Epiphone, <laughs> you want to make a guitar? And they did. So, you know, we, we put it together for a little while and uh, now it's available. Now it's out there. It's very exciting. Now the guitar is yeah. called the Nancy Wilson Fanatic Nighthawk. Yeah. What uh, is the symbolism of the, the Fanatic title? Well, um, the, during the time we were in um, the kitchen trying to cook this, this guitar up, uh, 
Hart was in the studio making an album that we called Fanatic. And I thought, you know, Nighthawk's cool, but something like Fanatic is cooler <laughs> because, you know, it's like, that's how you feel if you're a guitar player, you feel kind of fanatical about being a, a big, you know, a big loud electric rock guitar is more like a fanatical thing to do than a, night, a Nighthawk sounds more, I don't know, like a something a little more common to me, but um, fanatic really has power in the word, you know, there's, there's power, it's a powerful word. No. Now there's some cool things this guitar can do. There's mini humbucker, there's a full size humbucker, there's a five <laughs> position switch where you can get all sorts of stuff. Do you use <laughs> all the bells and whistles on there to get different tones? Or is there like yeah. one setting that you're like, I'll leave it on this most of the night? I mostly use one big fat distorted setting. What I oh, usually go, yeah, yeah. I, I like to go through a really great tube amp, you know, like a Fender Deluxe, old Fender Deluxe is my favorite, um, or a Mesa Boogie, you know, which we might want to actually pair, pair with those guys because it's, they're, they're, they're close to where I live. They're really cool guys, but um, and I like the orange amplifiers too. They really, so, so the night, the fanatic or the Nighthawk sounds so good in any of those amplifiers. And, you know, I don't hardly use many pedals. I just go straight for the pure raw raunch. <laughs> straight, just amp cable, yeah. guitar. Yeah. I love yep. it. Just plug it in, turn now, it up. <laughs> obviously this started as a, as a Gibson version now it's an Epiphone version. The first one you got out of the box, tell me your first impression of the new Epiphone guitars. Um, yeah, I mean, at first I was like, I'd rather have silver hardware than gold hardware, you know, but it was just, you know, cosmetics mostly. But the guts inside the guitar really sound good. And um, I think when it, a guitar like this, it, kind of feels almost vintage, you know, in it's the way it configures, like the, the mahogany and how the neck feels. And, you know, it's like a really old friend already because it's, it's kind of built to last and it's built like a vintage thing. Yeah. It's a good old new guitar. <laughs> Have you had a chance to, uh, I know you're always, you're composing films and writing songs and, and doing the hard thing. <laughs> had a chance to use it yet on anything? <laughs> well, I've been working on a, a new album, a solo album. A solo record. Cool. My first studio solo album. And um, it's come into play. Yeah. Of, you know, I, I go, I normally go for vintage guitars and vintage amplifiers, but, but the Fanatic has a special kind of place in certain kinds of songs for me. And it's all good. It, it all works. When uh, when can we be expecting this Nancy Wilson solo solo album? Yeah, it's it's coming up. It's called You and Me, and um, it's almost done. And yeah. this I put out one single first called The Rising, which was a cover of that Bruce Springsteen song. Yeah, with a lyric video. And um, the next one's coming in this month. That's called You and Me, which is the title track that's uh, just got mastered. And so we're mastering right along and uh, March is probably in February, early March is when everything will come out. Now, if the world goes back slightly to normal, do you plan on, on touring uh, as a solo artist as well? Well, I, I would do that. I mean, right now, I've been talking to some friends in Seattle. Um, my band is in Seattle mostly the, the heart players that we were out with last time on the tour. Um, so when we pass around all these files for the new songs, you know, we know each other as players well enough to kind of anticipate the other person's style, stylistic. So uh, talking right now to another Seattle guy that, from the Seattle Symphony, and there's a plan afoot in April to, do a, uh, a show, either live streamed or a live show, depending on the situation. Yeah. And 
co come out, do some solo acoustic stuff, then bring the band out and then bring the symphony out and, you know, build wow. up the show like that. So, and Have some you of the new done stuff. Anything like that with the, with the symphony and that kind of thing, or would this be your first time? Well, for me as a solo, it would be the first time. Um, with Hart, we did the uh, Royal Albert Hall show with the symphony there a few years back, which is, it's available on DVD. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that was a really thrilling night. It was really a beautiful night to have some of the Hart songs all scored with big orchestra, you know. Yeah. We did, yeah, all kinds of cool stuff with them, a lot of songs with them. But uh, yeah, so I, I think that's, you know, a good, just a really good plan to have, you know, like looking forward to doing something like that with the symphony and on kind of every level, grow it out to the full on symphony. Well, just a couple more things here. I mean, you've been a hugely influential artist for a lot of up and coming guitar players out there. What do you want them to feel when they pick up that guitar in the stores? Because it's out now. <laughs> What, what do you oh, hope yeah. they feel when they pick that up? <laughs> well, I hope they feel really cool when they pick that guitar up because it's a cool guitar and it's definitely a rock and roll guitar, you know? Yeah. I mean, it'll, it'll, it'll do jazz, it'll do whatever you want it to do, but I think it's, it's a guitar that should make you feel cool when you turn it up extra loud, you know, and just blast. <laughs> I like it. Well, Nancy, thank, you. Life. <laughs> thank you so much for sitting down with me today. Yeah. Uh, very excited. Nancy Wilson's Epiphone Fanatic Nighthawk is available now. We're so stoked. Uh, go check it out at a retailer near you. Your new solo record is coming very, very soon. We're all excited for that as well. Uh, thank, thank you so much uh, for Thanks taking the time to sit down with us. Stay healthy, and we hope to see you back out uh, on the road making music again soon. Oh, yeah. We really want to do that, too. Well, yeah. take care. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Pleasure. <laughs>